thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even for the time that we gather together for his sake. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to thank him and to remember him and to be away, to be always on his way and to be always uh, uh, remembering him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, of course, we have the lecture uh, on Jumu'ah after the khutbah. We talk together on the reflections that we can get from the khutbah itself. We, you, rem you still remember the topic of the Jumu'ah or not? You forgot. Did you still remember what we were talking about? Sabr. Okay, alhamdulillah. Means there, there is a person here who remember that. That's, that's alhamdulillah, at least one. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Did you forget brother Hamza? <laughs> <laughs> so we will talk tonight about that reflection on the topic and also we will talk about how did the prophet muhammad وسلم, master his sabr his patience and uh, why we why we are talking about the sabr of the prophet muhammad وسلم, because he is our best model not only in worship and not only in his message and how he, how did he convey the message, and not only in his life. I mean, as a as a prophet, as a husband, as a father, but also he is our best model when it comes to the sabr, when it comes to his patience. And as I told you, the higher level, the higher is the level, and the most difficult is the test. So imagine if you wanted to get the PhD, you will not expecting, you will not be able to expect that the test would be so easy. And as I give example today, imagine that you have a kid, he is in first grade and he gets one plus one equals two. So the, the, the test will be so easy, okay? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose the prophet Muhammad to be the best of the mankind. So could you imagine his tests? How it looked like, how it will be, how it will be the, the test of the Prophet Muhammad? The best man ever. So his test will be so difficult. And when you just analyze what happened is his in his life, you will you may ask yourself why Allah did that with his you know beloved Rasul. Sallallahu alayhi wa And I told you, it comes to that, the main concept. Inna Allah idha ahabba abadan ibtala. If Allah loved a person, if Allah loved a servant, he will test him. And he is the most beloved person to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's logic, it makes sense. And number two, we are talking about the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his patience, specifically about his patience, because we need to understand what happened in his life. And as alhamdulillah, as you know, just we we try to share some of the stories, some of the points together in the, 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 the night of Jumu'ah, so we know how was his patience sallallahu alaihi wasallam yes he had times he got sad he felt sorry yes he's a human being sallallahu alaihi wasallam and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know give him the the, the 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 verses that will support him allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said fasbir kama sabara ulul azmi min ar rusul O oh Muhammad, be patient as the highest rank of the prophets had patience. So be like them. Act like your brothers in prophethood. How many prophets we consider them? Ulul Azm. Ulul Azm means the most high names and higher ranks amongst the prophets. 
they were tested the most and they responded positively. They reacted very well when it comes to the destiny of Allah and how Allah tested them. So we have the most high and the most five names were tested. So let's count. Who is the first? Huh? Sayyiduna Ibrahim. Okay, number two. Sayyiduna Nuh. Nuh. Number three. Sayyiduna Musa. Number four. Sayyiduna Isa. Number five. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So we call them Ulul Azm. Ulul Azm means the, the, those people who had the ability to, to have that patient patience and at the same time Allah tested them the most amongst the humanity so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directed the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to have patience like those prophets so when he had been tested and he passed the test he deserved to be in that list and not only this he sallallahu alaihi wasallam number 1 in that list. Look at how Allah tested the Prophet Muhammad. He tested him with the mission. He tested him with the, the message itself. And it is the most difficult task that you give to some to, to the Prophet to give him the task that you must deliver the message. Just, uh, just imagine, imagine if you have an Imam you know, and he wanted to deliver the message and his people, his community, give him hard time. So what is the easiest decision that he can make? Yes, I'm, 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 I'm quit. Okay, I'm, I'm done. Salam alaikum. I'll go back to my country. You know, so <laughs> that's the, the easiest choice. Okay. But the prophets cannot do this. They cannot quit. Okay? If you are like me, if you are working in the religious ministry in Egypt, the easiest decision that you can resign. Okay? And uh, okay, I'm, I'm done. Alhamdulillah. You give me a hard time. So, salam alaikum. The prophets cannot do this. They cannot resign. Allah assigned them and it is a sacred choice and a sacred command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They cannot resign. So whatever they will face, they will continue till they die. So that's the, the test, the first test that the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had. And he had many tests with his people. Allah tested him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could let them accept his message so Allah could send him to just to the people that they will listen to him but that's not that's not how it is going that's not how it is working you have to go and deliver the message to the people that they will dis disobey you and not only this they will attack you they will make fun of you they will mock they will make plots they will try to kill you. They will beat you up and your body will bleed. And they will try to assassinate you. They will try to kill your family members. They killed already his companions. So it's not easy task. It's not easy task at all. Imagine that you are a human being like the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imagine you are in the midst of that test and it is test after test after test. And I remember what happened with the Prophet Moses. You know, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said to him. He had a problem with Fir'aun, the Pharaoh, the king of the country. So, and he, in their point of view, in their point of view, he committed a crime. He hit somebody by mistake and he killed him. So they wanted to arrest him. You know, wanted. So they spread the news that Moses is wanted. 
and the police officers in the city are searching for him. He flee and he went to another city, to another place, let's say another country nowadays. He went to Median, Sana'a, Al Yemen. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the command again, and he said, Idhab ila Fir'auna innahu tagha. Go to Pharaoh. Now he, he is an oppressor. And go and deliver the message to him. I need you to hold on a little bit and start think. Just stop here. Can you imagine what the task is? What is the mission is? Musa, the one who is wanted, and everyone in the city is looking for Musa. Allah is telling him not to go to like an individual, a person who is not known in the country. No, Allah is telling him, go to the king himself. Where? In his palace. That palace surrounded by guards, the police officers everywhere. And, and think about something. They knew Musa because Musa السلام, was raised where? In the palace of Fir'aun. So the first step that he will put in Egypt, they will arrest him. So how could I deliver the message to the king? How could I reach to the king? You know, that I'm telling you right now, okay, get that letter and give it to, to, to the president by yourself. Do you think that they will allow you to, to reach even to the, the fence of the, the palace? No. And he was the person in their point of view, he committed the crime. But Allah said that. So what is the first request that you expect Musa alayhi salam to ask from Allah? Oh Allah, if that is the task, if that is the mission, I ask you to let Jibreel carry me to put me in the room of Fir'aun so I can deliver the message. You know? Okay, oh Allah give me, and he has the stick, you know? Let that stick work as a magic. So I will be invisible, and I will be able to enter, like sneaky, to the room of Fir'aun. I will enter to his room. Salam alaikum Fir'aun, you know? I'm the messenger of Allah. I came with the message, so worship Allah alone. And salam alaikum again, like the magic works, you know? I'm invisible. I run. I delivered the message. No, <laughs> that's not how it works. No, that's not the. That's not the, the the way. You have to go, walking, struggle. They will arrest you. You will meet for out after long process, and you will challenge him. And everyone will be against you. You will be under pressure, and that's the test. That's the test. They will try to kill you. But at the end, Allah will give you victory. That's the case. That's why when they reach to the, the, the minute that they wanted to test their Iman, so Fir'aun in their back, behind them, and the Red Sea in front of them, at that time, in this conjunction, his companions, the believers, said, Inna lamudrakun. They will destroy us. Khalas. <laughs> we came to the point that they are going to kill us. Mathematically, logically, whatever the method is that you will calculate or you will study the situation with. Khalas. You have the Red Sea in front of you and Fir'aun behind you. So in we are going to be destroyed. What he said. Absolutely not. What's the firm belief that he had? Wallahi subhanallah, just, just think about it. What's that belief that he had? Absolutely not. Allah with me. And he's going to guide me. 
Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. What a beautiful message. So that's, that's how he reacted. Allah tested him, and that is how he responded. Sometimes you are in a bad financial situation, and you have lots of people are buzzing and try to whisper in your mind. You don't have money. You know, it's a critical time. It's very bad situation. Okay, get that, you know, loan and deal with interest and deal with lots of pressure. You are in the midst of the, the test itself and your wife is pushing you. Call them, go to them, call the bank, meet the guy, get the loan, let's start. We are so poor, we have nothing. You know, lots of pressure. That's a test. That's a test. How are you going to react? How are you going to react? Would you have patience? And, and say, no, Allah, I, I'm sure that Allah with me, Allah will never forsake me. That's the case. So let's go back to Rasulullah. The first and foremost test was his mission. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That's why I feel the scene and what happened during the time of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he delivered the message. When he delivered the message. Allah revealed the Quran. Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum deenakum wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati Today, I have completed your religion and I have perfected my favors upon you. That means it was so remarkable. It was so amazing. It was so significant that the Prophet Muhammad already completed his mission. And number two, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during his last sermon, the, the, the farewell sermon, he said, to his companions, Allah beloved, did I convey the message? They said yes. He he repeated that three times. Allah beloved, did I convey the message? They said yes. He said, Allahumma fashhad, O oh Allah, you are my witness upon them. They acknowledge it, and I did my, I did my mission. I fulfilled my mission. That's Rasulullah. And number two, when you think about after the message and after the, the plots they made against the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the time of Hijrah when they gathered together and they have their swords, they wanted to kill the Prophet Muhammad and you recite at the beginning of Surah Yaseen, وَجَعَلْنَا مِنْ بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ سَدَّةً وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ سَدَّةً فَأَغْشَيْنَاهُمْ فَهُمْ لَا يُبْسِرُونَ Look at how he reacted. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Allah supported him. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at how Allah tested him in his family members. Allah tested him. He lost Khadija, radiallahu anhu. He lost his uncle, Abu Talib. He was raised as an orphan, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Lost his mom and dad. He lost Halima. The one who, you know, suckled him. Yes, breastfeed him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Who lost Ummu Ayman. The one who used to take care of him after his mother. So he, one after one, one after one. And why is that? Some of the scholars said his uncle was one of the pillars in his life. Khadija also was the second pillar in his life. So instead of depending and relying on them, Allah wanted him to rely just and only exclusively on Allah. Not to think about anyone. When you got hardship, when you got a calamity, don't think about your uncle. That's why when you have somebody you rely on and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make something happen that, and that man will disappear from your life, that's a good sign. Allah wanted you to depend on him, just on him. 
and do not associate any partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and also, Allah texted the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, with his children. He, Allah granted him seven children. All of them died except Fatima. All of them, six of them died. Can, can you imagine? During your life, you lose six of your children out of seven. That's a, that's a huge number, a huge percentage. So how could he handle when we have a person, if he lost one child, one child, he lived the rest of his life in a very miserable way. And everyone give him the excuse. You know what? Leave him. He lost his child. Leave him. You know what? We appreciate that you are in a, we know we understand that you are in a bad situation because you lost your child. Rasulullah lost his wives and lost his children, lost his family members. And yet he can stand up. He can deliver the message. He can go and march in battles for the sake of Allah and migrate in that age from Mecca to Medina and establish a new society in Medina, sign the treaties, meet the leaders, convey the message and be a good husband. Look at how he was Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And not only this, accepting the revelation from Allah and asking people to write down the Quran and supervise by himself how they recite the Quran and giving the hadith, teaching the ummah, delivering the message, Allahu Akbar. Look at how he was Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah tested him. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not only had patience, no, and he did not only practice patience, but he mastered his patience. That is the good, the best example for every Muslim should follow. If you have a bad financial situation, remember Rasulullah. And he said, Inna Allah khayyarani. Allah gave me the choice whether to be a prophet who is king or to be a prophet who is servant, means poor. And I chose to be the prophet who is poor and servant. So I can eat a day in one day, then I thank Allah. And I have nothing on the other day, then I ask Allah. Look at that concept. Not only this, he started to teach his followers how to have patience and how to accept the destiny of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I, as I shared with you before Maghrib, I'm sorry for sharing too much notifications today. It's Jumu'ah. It's a good opportunity so we can read a little bit about the Quran and about the Hadith. One of the things that I shared with you on WhatsApp, the Hadith of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and it is in the highest levels of authenticity. It's called Muttafaqun Alayh. Muttafaqun Alayh agreed upon that there is consensus amongst the majority of the transmitters of the hadith that it is Sahih hadith, agreed upon, mentioned in Al-Bukhari and Muslim. That a, 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 a woman came to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and she was a black woman. And she said, Ya Rasulullah, 
inni usra. I have epilepsy. I have that disease. I lose my consciousness. It knocks me down. So I have that disease. And when I got it, it causes me to be uncovered. So I need you to make dua for Allah that Allah cures me. That Allah gave me shifa. So he, she has two problems. The, the disease itself, the epilepsy, and the other one, when she got this situation, that sickness, she becomes uncovered and, and she is a woman. She had that shyness. And look at the modesty. <laughs> we have people nowadays voluntarily. They are, you know, donating their bodies and they are uncovered willingly, willingly. That's a big difference. So she wanted Rasulullah to make dua for her. That Allah give her cure and heal. So Rasulullah gave her another option. He had another offer. He said, I can make dua for Allah to give you cure and heal. But I have another option. What about if you got patient, if you got patient, and Allah will let you enter Jannah. So she said, okay. I accept the second offer. I don't need to be cured. I don't need shifa. I need Jannah. But I have one request. Can you please ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to be uncovered and got this case only while I'm in my house, not in the marketplace? Then Rasulullah raised his hands. And he made dua for her that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give her that, that situation not to be uncovered in public. And subhanallah, after the dua, when she got this illness or that situation, she always in her house, in her room, when she got uncovered, she is in her room and it never happened in the marketplace. So some of the Sahaba, even after the death of Rasulullah, used to look at her and used to talk to each others. If you wanted to see one of the people of Jannah, look at this woman. Look at this woman. She got patience and Allah granted her Jannah. Look at how he taught his followers to master patience. That's Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as I told you today, and I need you to think about this, we need to get to Jannah, all of us, alhamdulillah. We need to enter Jannah, including our brothers and sisters here on Zoom or in Facebook. Yes, you need to enter Jannah, but <laughs> most amazing way of thinking that we need to enter Jannah but we do not need to die. And we need to get to Firdaus al-A'la without even being tested. So oh Allah, we do not need to get tested. We do not need to die. But at the same time, we need to enter Jannah and Firdaus al-A'la. You know? So how could you achieve this? You cannot achieve this without being tested. Allah said, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ وَلَقَدْ فَتَنَّ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَلَا يَعْلَمَنَّ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ صَدَقُوا وَلَا يَعْلَمَنَّ الْكَاذِبِينَ Allah said, do you think that the people will die, that the people will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without being tested? No. Allah said, We have already tested the people before them. So Allah wanted to see who is going to be truthful in his 
claim that he is a true believer and who is lying. So tests are coming. It depends on you. How are you going to receive them? How are you going to respond to these tests? So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant all of us the iman, the faith that we can respond positively, nicely to the tests from Allah. So we can stand before Allah and we can say to Allah, Oh Allah, you have tested us and we responded positively. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our ibadah. Allahumma ameen, ya rabbal alameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us all, insha'Allah, enter Jannah al firdaus Ameen, ya rabbal alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of us amongst his righteous and uh, righteous servants. Ameen, ya rabbal alameen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala let us all be with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannah al firdaus ya rabbal alameen. Jazakumullahu khayran for sharing the time with us. And I think it is a good time now so we can go and get the tea uh, that Brother Abdul Basit brought. Uh, we thank him for his efforts and we extend our thanking to Sister Samana too. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless her. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullahu khayra. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.